Welcome back to the channel. Brian from Apex Detail here. Before we get started with the video, I just want to let you know I do appreciate each and every one of you and the support you give to the channel. Without that, there wouldn't be a channel. So let's get started. Today, we're working on a Hummer, and I didn't want to show you this just because of the vehicle itself. I'm not actually even a huge fan of Hummers or correcting them. It's the, the 90 degree angles and all the tight spaces uh, that takes a bunch of different polishers and attachments to get this job done. As you can see, we really do have some trouble clear coat, swirling, staining, scratches, everything you can think of on the surface of this black paint. And this is GM black paint, and ha it happens to be uh, moderate to hard clear coat, sometimes even stubborn. So before we get started, we want to protect everything. And this has a lot of plastics, and the plastics are thin, they're cheap. You bump up against them with any of the pads, and you could be asking for trouble. So let's get everything protected. For that purpose, I like to use the 3M Precision Automotive Tape. Uh, I do have both this and the dark blue automotive tape, but I prefer this when I have it. I run out of it quickly. It's not cheap, but it is a low profile, and I did a video on this. It's a low profile, and it does have great adhesive that keeps it down on the panel, so if you bump against it with your pad, it won't lift it up. Getting the adhesive on your pad, and then you'll have to switch out, just makes more work for you. Go around and protect all plastics that protrude out far enough that a pad or a backing plate could bump up against it. You rub off the texture of that plastic, you're going to have to replace it. There goes your overhead. It's just a good thing to cover your backside. Also, remove everything that could get in the way. Your antenna could get in the way of a pad and a polisher, could smack you in the face. Happened to me a couple times. Anything you can lift off to get to the paint easier, also to clean better that we just couldn't get during the wash process, just like this sun visor here. Ugh, look at that mess. Nothing worse than a Hummer that's been sitting under trees. Uh, it just makes for a longer service and an expensive one. So we do have everything protected by now, and we are about ready to rock and roll with the paint correction. I took care of the roof beforehand, a lot of acreage up there, and just impossible for me to get footage for you. And luckily for us, the H2 here, the hood flips forward so I can get a great angle and show you everything that is on here. We have staining, scratching, this hood is a mess, but we will turn it around. So I have uh, masking tape there for contrast for 50-50. I'm going to get out my trusty 3D ACA 500. Uh, I'm going to get out the rotary and a Lake Country Low Lint Lamb's Wool pre-washed pad. Here we go. This is our test spot, and I do recommend uh, finding a test spot to find out first if you have hard or soft clear coat, if you're not really sure or familiar with the vehicle. And I do have a video, dedicated video, not too far back that shows exactly how to tell if you have hard or soft clear coat. And we want to find the right combination of pads to get around this vehicle quickly that will remove all the imperfections, yet leave as much clear coat as we can behind for the owner of the vehicle as he's going to have this thing for years to come. When it comes to the test spot itself, there are many ways to test the paint, and there are many videos out there showing how to test the paint uh, to find the right combination of polish and pad. My test spot and the way I like to do it is just exactly the way I'm going to start to correct. That way I do not have any guesswork, and when I find something that works, it's something I can go all the way around the car and very rarely have to adjust from there. Um, so knowing this clear coat, I know it's going to take the 3D ACA and the alpha abrasives to remove the imperfections on this hard, stubborn clear coat. I also know I'm going to need the rotary and I'm going to need a wool pad. That combination of those three is going to get my cutting process done. So in this test area, we're going to do the cut and the finish and see how everything works out. And then we have everything ready, set on our cart, ready to go. So let me remove the residue here and I'll bring you in. Yeah. 
As we'll be able to see, I removed everything I wanted to go after. I am completely happy with this com combination. I'm going to stick with it. You can see the hazing there, so all we have to do is finish down a little bit. And for that, I choose a MacShine polish pad, foam polish pad, and 3D1. 3D1 on some clear coats, softer clear coats, would be enough to cut and remove imperfections that are this bad. But on hard, stubborn, stubborn clear coat, 3D1 is actually perfect to finish down and use for the finishing process. And that will do it. This is the exact team for both cutting and finishing that we're going to use for this vehicle. I have everything ready to go. It's on my cart. On smaller vehicles, I normally choose to go around the car and get the cutting process over with and then come back and really concentrate on finishing up. On larger vehicles, harder clear, I have everything there and I'm going to do one panel at a time. I'm going to cut it. I'm going to finish it from top to bottom and move on. So when it comes to cutting, and before we move on to different polishers and attachments, the speed setting for this type of correction on this vehicle is going to be leaning towards the 3.5 fourth speed setting on this polisher. Arm speed, 1 inch every second or 2. Pressure, just my thumb on top of the polisher. It's kind of just equal to a firm handshake, if that makes sense, so not a lot of pressure at all. That will take care of the large flat surfaces. There's a lot of 90 degree angles and you've seen this attachment here. This is a piece I could break down into four separate pieces and stack it up. These here are pieces I haven't shown you yet. These are extensions for the rotary. Let's start with the shorter one. Screws right on the 5 8 uh, threads for the rotary and then the backing plate of your choosing. 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, 5 inch, 7 inch, uh, for this purpose here, we're going to put a 3-inch and a 3-inch MacShine wool pad, and that will be perfect for this little uh, contour or body line here on the hood. This pad and backing plate will be the best choice. As a larger one, you're only going to have room for a quarter of the pad, and you won't have the full energy with the smaller pad and backing plate. You have the full energy uh, from the polisher going down through the extension into the pad and doing the correction, as you can see here. 
just like the four-piece totem pole uh, extension for the rotary that I showed you earlier that we can break down into four separate pieces that are all milled perfectly, these extensions here are, are also milled perfectly. You can see just how smooth, no wobble, no vibration, incredible tools, and makes the rotary such a powerful tool and really one of the most versatile tools you can add to your arsenal. As you can see, all imperfections removed, all we have left, hazing, or you can call them buffer trails from the pad, that we can take care of in the finishing process using our little 3-inch polisher there as well. Finishing up the cutting process on the hood, I walk around and make sure there are other areas I could use this extension, backing plate, and pad before I switch to an even smaller set. All right, I cut the hood. I also went around and finished, and we have a huge turnaround here. Not perfect. There are some areas, some blemishes that are through the clear coat, and only a body shop would be able to take care of that from here. But we have a huge turnaround. The customer will be happy. Uh, so we're going to continue, and I can show you through the next few videos uh, some other extensions and tools and polishers and pads that we're going to be using. That will wrap up today's video. We will resume correction on the Hummer in the next video. I thank you for stopping by. If you are enjoying the content, like, subscribe, share the content, hit the notification bell.